So welcome back to the third part of dealing with ick in the Bowfront Aquarium. At this point, we've kind of recovered. I, I say recovered because we don't have any obvious ick in the tank any longer, whether that was due to the uh, uh, level of medication that I had to raise uh, or the uh, dropping of the salinity that I'm not sure of. There are three real questions left. What did cause the situation? What do I do now once I'm in the recovery aspects? And three, how do I prevent that situation from occurring in the future? Come along with me as we go and find out how to deal with all three of those situations. So the current status of the big 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium is it appears as though we've got the ick situation under control, unfortunately at a cost, and that cost was fish. I lost all the butterfly fish, which would be the Heniocus butterflies, the double saddle butterflies, and most sadly the golden butterfly. I also lost the clown triggerfish and the harlequin tusk. Now those fish may have been um, susceptible or, or irritated by the higher levels of medication. Those fish may have also been so parasitized, meaning that they had so many parasites that by the time I got the uh, copper level up to a therapeutic level, uh, it was just still too much for the fish. So I'd like to show you what the current status of the tank is. So the fish that we still have are the uh, tangs, the naso tangs, as well as the blue tangs, and I think there's a uh, coal or yellow eye tang in there. Uh, all the damsels are still in there. Uh, there appears to be the Huma Huma trigger and fortunately I don't see Big Mac here which is the maculosis and this typically is his uh, spot that he likes to hang out in but uh, a moment ago we did see the uh, the large French angel so the two big remaining French angels are still in there. They obviously were able to tolerate the medication levels. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but um, the water is uh, quite yellow, and the reason behind that is we had to remove uh, the carbon out of the situation, meaning I've got a canister filter down here that I usually place a bag of activated carbon in, which helps contain the clarity of the water. Uh, I had to remove the activated carbon because the activated carbon would remove the medication. So without the carbon in the system, there's nothing in there to remove the yellow out of the water. This is kind of normal uh, in a situation such as this. You, you, you can't leave the carbon in there, and the fish can deal with some yellowish, uh, yellowishness in the water. Uh, the other thing that we've done is this tank has an ultraviolet sterilizer. Now, someone had asked recently, what is an ultraviolet sterilizer? and it's a cylinder that has a fluorescent type bulb inside of it that produces an ultraviolet spectrum. Similar to the bug zapper on your patio, uh, as the parasites pass through it and are exposed uh, to the, the, the ultraviolet spectrum of light, uh, they are sterilized or killed off. Now, the medication, in this particular case, cupramine, specifically says, turn off the UV sterilizer. So I'm assuming that the UV has something to do with affecting the um, effectiveness uh, of the copper or the cupramine medication. So the ultraviolet sterilizer has been unplugged. Um, aside from the wet dry trickle filter, and of course a pleated cartridge in the canister filter, uh, we've got one other piece of equipment on here, and that's the uh, algae scrubber. This is the original Santa Monica uh, SM100 model. Uh, it straddles across the top of the sump. Um, we use it to grow an abundance of algaes inside of and those algaes in turn help consume nutrients out of the water. Now as soon as I began to add uh, the medication, it had a very negative effect on those algaes. 
So in addition to the wet dry trickle filter, which helps break down organic compounds into much more easily digested or converted uh, nutrients, the algae scrubber absorbs the nutrients directly into the algae. Unfortunately, the medications killed off the algae, and so there's not much in the way of algaes to consume nutrients. Hence, the wet dry trickle filter is carrying all the job at this point. But what's really interesting is the algaes are already growing back. So you can see in here, there's algaes beginning to grow back in there. Now, they are affected by the medication, and yet at the same time, they're resilient enough to want to continue to grow back. What's interesting is in addition to nutrients at the moment, those algae are also consuming the copper out of the water. Uh, so that can work for us, and that can also work against us. So as I've mentioned in the very beginning, I've had a lot of success using Coopermine by Seachem, but as opposed to a full dosage, which is suggested on the bottle, I usually break it up into half doses. If it's said to add 10 milliliters today, I would add 5 milliliters twice a day, maybe once in the morning, once at the end of the day. The problem is ultimately, how do you determine if you've reached a therapeutic level? Well, there's two ways of doing so. One would be visually to see if you're having an effect on the parasites or an effect on the fish, and that's what I was using to monitor the situation. Uh, the alternative would be use a test kit that measures the amount of copper in the water. The bottle of Coopermine specifically says on the directions that the tank or the fish will tolerate, emphasis on the word tolerate, 0.8 milligrams per liter. It strongly suggests the use of a test kit and suggests also that you not go beyond 6 or 0.6 milligrams per liter. Well, I have a test kit at home. It's probably a good seven or eight years old, and to be quite honest with you, I don't even know where it's at. As I've mentioned in the past, and not that I'm a shoot from the hip kind of guy, but I've had fairly good success monitoring it visually. I don't necessarily suggest that you try the same. In fact, I would encourage you, if you have access to the test kit, use it. So the two ways of monitoring if you've reached a therapeutic level would be visually to see if you're having an effect on the fish or on the parasites, and the other would be to use a test kit to raise the level to a certain point. As I mentioned, I was using the visual method to try to determine if I'd reached that therapeutic level, and in fact, I had come in here and saw that there was a noticeable decrease in the number of parasites on the fish. So at that point, being nervous about the toxicity uh, or the tolerance of the fish to the medication, I didn't want to lose fish because of too strong a medication. I stopped adding it. Unfortunately, when I came back the next day, the parasites had made a second wave and it was even a little more vicious than it was before uh, and that negatively affected me as well as all the fish in the tank. I'm Jim Stein and this is LA Fish Guys Catch of the Day. Sponsored by Seachem. Hey guys, I'm Daniel from Seachem and your tip of the day is about treating with coopermine, um, using copper to treat it. Um, there's a few things to think about when you're doing it. You know, of course, follow the directions, turn off the UV sterilizer, no ozone while using it, don't mix other medications. One thing to remember is that the rock and gravel in your tank is porous and can absorb some of the medication. So sometimes you'll need to add more than just the recommended dosage to maintain the proper levels in the water. When you're doing this, to make sure that you have the correct, the correct dose. It's really important to use a, a copper test kit, um, like our multi-test copper kit. If you do this, you can maintain the optimal levels. This will help you get rid of the disease while keeping your fish healthy and happy. Uh, once you're done with the treatment and you're trying to remove that copper, in addition to water changes and using carbon, we also have a product called Cooperzorb. It's an absorption resin which will pull the copper out of the water. It's very specific to pulling heavy metals and that'll make it easier to get, your, get the medication out of the tank. Hope that was helpful and you'll have a great day. This has been the LA Fish Guys Catch of the Day. Seachem products cover the full spectrum of aquarium requirements. Visit Seachem.com. Just add water, we'll do the rest. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. 
Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. So at this point, as I mentioned earlier, we have reached a point where it has been beneficial to the fish. We did lose some of the fish, most of the fish are still here, and I see no visible signs of ick on the fish any longer. So the recovery process at this point will be to not put the carbon back in so that we can allow what medication's in there to kind of have a residual benefit to the fish and hopefully prevent that second wave. The algae scrubber is something I'm going to end up having to monitor, as well as the actual copper level that's left in the tank. I'm still a little hesitant about adding more, but if I continue to monitor the fish and begin to see a second wave, then I'll definitely start adding the medication again. Now, the real question is, why did I end up with ick in a perfectly operating tank that's been running for two years, and the last year with only one addition in the tank, that being the Huma Huma trigger. Was there an ammonia or a nitrite spike? Well, I don't really know. I did test the water, but that was after I began to put the medication into the tank. I was fearing that the medication was gonna have a negative effect on the micro life in the tank, and that micro life has never been exposed over the last two years to any medications. So as the copper affected it, its potential could have been that it um, allowed a little bit of waste to enter the tank, causing an ammonia or a nitrite spike. Uh, I did test the water. Uh, I found 0.25 ppm of ammonia in the system, which is the lowest number on the chart, and I found zero nitrite in the system. So it's possible there might have been some biological little spike there, but again, this tank's been running for two years, and I anticipated that little ammonia spike as just a variation in the test kit nothing of any significance. Maybe I was wrong. A few weeks back you saw me release a video that talked about adding tangs to the system and one of the things that you probably saw in that video was a large school of Heniocus butterfly fish. Um, what you don't know is that that video was filmed probably a year ago and the tank itself has been operating for the last year with no additions of fish other than a Huma Huma trigger that went in in the last couple of months. What I can tell you though is that population of Heniocus butterflies slowly over the course of the last year decreased down to literally one. Uh, I had assumed that it was just more a case of aggression and there was one particular uh, dominant male in the tank who as with a lot of schooling fish tends to beat up his subordinates just so that he can remain uh, as the king fish. Um, so was he or were they part of the ick problem? Did they come in with some long-term issue? Was it something to do with collection? Um, I don't know. Uh, it may have had something to do with that in the form of stress, but kind of hard to determine if in fact that was the situation or the source of the problem at that time. Now, I mentioned there's a little Huma Huma that's in the tank. He's doing really well. Interesting to note, that this particular customer, uh, since I've had them, which is a little over two and a half years now, has two tanks, this 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium here in the, uh, the main floor of the house, and then you've probably seen that 80 gallon that's upstairs in the bathroom. Uh, currently, that 80 gallon upstairs is in the process of being replaced, and why is it being replaced? Because that tank had two crashes uh, that tank had some Heniocus butterflies, had a maroon clownfish in there, had a um, large dog face puffer, and of course had a Huma Huma trigger. Uh, that tank, as I mentioned, had two crashes. Both of those crashes um, occurred during little heat spells here in Los Angeles. Um, so I'd have figured that tank without a chiller might have had a temperature spike in it of some sorts. 
Uh, so again, that could potentially be the situation. But what I really want to point out is that little Huma Huma trigger has been involved in both tanks and has survived through all three ick situations. Is he a survivor? Or is he the one who happens to cause the problem or bring the problem into the tank? You know, I don't know at this point. He's a fat little guy. He's doing really well. Unfortunately, um, he's been involved in three different situations where the tank uh, had problems, broke out in some type of ick. And again, um, all three situations involve a, a, a rise in the temperature. So does the little Huma Huma get stressed out um, then break out in parasites, and then at that point, everyone else in the tank becomes um, susceptible to it? I'm not sure. So I never really did figure out what caused the problem in the tank. Um, at this point, as far as moving forward, I will probably maintain a slightly low level of copper in the system. Uh, I will have a conversation with the homeowner, and maybe they can be a little more diligent on paying attention to the fish. It just happened to be that uh, that uh, Tuesday, which I show up every uh, every Tuesday, that particular Tuesday I came in to do service on the tank and notice at that time they had the fish. Would it have been helpful had the uh, homeowner noticed that a few days earlier? Yes, it would have. Um, so I will have a conversation with him and maybe he'll be a little more diligent in paying attention to the fish. But as far as what to do in the future, since I don't have a good answer as to what caused the problem, all I can do is be aware of it and make it a point to not only be prepared, but maybe in some little way uh, have myself set up to try to prevent that, maybe by running a low level of copper in the water uh, in the future. One of the other things that we did to try to alleviate some of the stress in the tank was to drop the salinity. To be thoroughly therapeutic as far as low salinity is concerned, you want to be down around 1.101, 1.102, maybe 1.103. In this particular case, I didn't take it down that far. Uh, I did a series of 30 gallon water changes, but I only brought it down to 101.6. It may not be therapeutic in the sense that I'm eliminating parasites, but as I mentioned before, one of the things that the parasites do while they're on the fish is draw moisture out of the fish. So again, saltwater fish being in a saltwater environment already have that working against them. Um, but by dropping the salinity, it kind of lessens that, that draw or tug of moisture out of the fish at least a little bit. I need to add some water back today for evaporation. And again, this is fresh water. This happens to be the new 80 gallon tank upstairs in the bathroom that I've just positioned. This tank has a filter built into the back so we don't have to worry about the canister filter and the undergravel filter below. It's a frustrating situation downstairs to have lost those fish. And believe me, I feel heartbroken. In particular, there was a golden butterfly in there that I really enjoyed. And he had been through a lot previously to get into that tank and then sadly to have lost his life due to the ick or parasites. But as with this tank, we're gonna set it up. As with the tank downstairs, we're gonna get more fish. You just have to stick with it, even though it can be kind of frustrating at times to lose your little wet pets. You gotta keep moving forward. <laughs>